Hello there, my name is Dominic and today I have this. The Boschman 7-band parametric graphic equalizer with subwoofer output for a quick unboxing and a review. And today I'm going to tell you all you need to know about this product, including the price, how to use it, and that includes connecting the power, inputs and outputs, do's and don'ts, and hopefully by the end of this video I will have convinced you not to buy and use this product. And these are the gadgets available in the box. We have the Boschman equalizer, the installation manual, and some installation hardware that includes the screws, the brackets, and the power connector. I will take pictures of this manual and post them at the end of this video. This is how you connect the power to this Boschman 7-band equalizer. At the back, you have three terminals, ground, remote and battery. Now I have three cables over here, yellow, blue and black. Now the yellow cable is usually connected to the 12 volt power supply. The blue cable is usually connected to the remote turn on on your head unit. I'll show you that in a few seconds. And the black cable is the negative or the ground. I've connected my head unit to this cable. This comes from my 12 volt computer power supply over here. As for the blue cable, I've connected it to the blue white cable from the head unit and that is usually known as the remote turn-on cable. So whenever I switch on the head unit, it will automatically send a signal through this cable to turn on the Boschman equalizer. And finally, the two black cables from the head unit and the equalizer, I've connected them to the negative terminal of my power supply as well. Now, when you use an equalizer, you will not use any of the speaker terminals on your radio. So I've just secluded them like this. So I won't be using this because as for my speakers, I will connect them to my external amplifier. Now my power supply is on and when I turn on the radio, this equalizer will automatically turn on as well. And as you can see, it's already on. So the equalizer does not have a power button as you can see. It relies on the external input from your source, that is the head unit. The fourth button over here controls the illumination and it's either red or green. You can't turn it off, it's either that or that. Now let's connect some inputs and see what each of these dials actually does. If you are an enthusiast and you just want to use this Boschman equalizer but you don't have the head unit, you can just connect these two cables together and connect them to power directly and that will power this Boschman equalizer. The next step is connecting your inputs. I've just disconnected the power so that we don't get confused too much. Now I'll use the outputs from my digital media receiver and connect them to the input of my equalizer over here. Now remember that this thing was made for very old car radios. So old car radios never had any of these three. They only had two if you are very lucky. So I'm just going to connect them to two of them. And if you are unlucky in the olden days, they even didn't have the any outputs. You had to connect it directly from the speaker level inputs. And to, to do that, you needed to buy an extra gadget and connect between your speaker outputs and this equalizer. Now we have two inputs, we have the radio and auxiliary. To connect anything to them, you first of all need to remove these caps. They are very tightly held on, so you need a tool to remove them. Now you will notice that they are not color coordinated over here. All of them are black in color. From in the inputs, you just have to remember where the inputs and outputs are so that you don't get confused. Now you need to match this so that you know which one is right and which one is left. Normally the red is usually the right channel, so I'm just going to connect the red to the right and the white to the left channel, as you can see over here. And now let me connect a separate auxiliary input. And this I can use to hook up directly to my phone like that. After you do that, you use this button to connect the inputs. When it's outward, it's connected to the radio input. And when you press it inside, it's connected to the auxiliary radio auxiliary. So the equalizer has two inputs. I've just replaced these caps so that you don't get further confused. And here are all the outputs where we are going to connect them to the external audio amplifier. Again, as you can see, none of these ports are color coordinated. You just have to know what you are connecting to as the installer. The first two are front, right and left. Then we have the rear and the subwoofer output. First of all, let's connect the front and the rear. And for that, you need a four channel audio amplifier like this, the Jack CA-245 car audio amplifier. I have a separate video about this amplifier, so I'm not going to repeat myself. So I just connect it to the front like that. And the other cables, I will connect to channel one and channel two. That's what I'll use for my front channels. Next, you connect to the output rear. The other end will go into the amplifier, just like that. Now we are done with the front and rear channels. 
and finally we connect to the subwoofer amplifier now this is meant to be connected to a monoblock amplifier it can be a powered active subwoofer or a big monoblock amplifier that you can connect up to four subwoofer speakers like this one over here and now all connections are done and here is the outcome and as you can see it's a complicated mess of cables and connections everywhere so let me explain what i did I have this phone over here connected to this JVC car audio and the output is connected to the radio input of my equalizer. On the other hand, I have this phone connected to this cable which is also connected to the other input over here, auxiliary input. Like I told you, you just change the inputs just by pressing this button over here. So let me play some music. The first button is the gain, so it's recommended to not use this as your volume, always use the main volume on your input. So I can either use this on my radio or I can use the volume on the phone over here. So never use the gain as your volume. So what if you have two very different inputs over here? That's why you have this gain input. And if I remove this cover, you can see that you just use your screwdriver and you adjust the gain over here. So that's how the equalizer looks like inside. You can see the LEDs, they are now green. If I press this button, I can change them to red. There's no setting to completely turn them off. What we have here is the fader. Now this controls either your front or rear speakers. But before we discuss that, let me show you the connections on my outputs over here. Now one of my outputs has gone into my car audio amplifier over here and it has gone into channel one and channel two. And the output is connected to that speaker, the right speaker and the left speaker. These are six by nine speakers. As for the rear channel, I've not connected anything because I didn't have enough cables, but I'm supposed to connect the rear cables to channel three and four to go out as my mid range. So what instead I've done is this. I've just connected the subwoofer output over here and that has come into channel 3 and 4 on my car audio amplifier over here and that is my sub output and I've connected the two subwoofers over here that is right subwoofer and here we have the left subwoofer but in reality I'm supposed to use this as my mid-range speaker and then I have a separate monoblock amplifier I'm using this instead of that it's still a subwoofer amplifier. I'm supposed to use this as a single amplifier for the bass, but I didn't have enough cables, so this is what I have used instead. Now the fader is used to select either front or rear speakers according to your set dial. If I set it to front, the only output that will come will come from the front over here. The rear will be silent. And again, if I set it to the other extreme, only the rear will work and the front will cease working. But if I set it at the middle, all two inputs will be working. So you can set it according to your preferences. Now over here we have the subwoofer gain and the frequency. These two dials are for the subwoofer only. You usually set your gain according to your inputs again, according to your preferences. I like using the low frequency, that's why I have it around 30 hertz over here. And this will be the gain. So this is the major advantage of this dial. In a public vehicle like a Matatu, the driver can just turn this dial and kill the bass in the whole vehicle just by turning that. Now let me just show you how I kill the bass on my car audio amplifier over here and you see how complicated it will be. Press and hold the settings button, then I rotate to audio control, press to confirm, then I rotate it to subwoofer, I press to confirm, then I rotate it backwards one more time, then I just press off and that's the whole process of killing the subwoofer output on this head unit and you can see how complicated it is and that's why they prefer using this in matatus because with just one simple twist of the dial you can kill the bass inside that vehicle and finally we have the seven band equalizer knobs that's from 50 hertz over here all the way to 12 kilohertz on the other end now this is usually for your twitter and this is usually for your mid bass so you can just rotate these knobs according to your preferences now let's see a sample
with just one dial i can kill the bass i don't know if you can hear it you threw my microphone but this is usually for your twitter and i know you can hear that very well and this is for your mid bass Right now I have some mid bass and I can reduce that to zero. So you just set these others according to your preferences. And that's all you need to know about the Boschmann 7 band parametric equalizer. Now one other thing I want to mention is that this is a great product. It does exactly what you want it to do. And it's recommended that if you use an equalizer or such other device, just set your amplifier to pass through over here. Don't either use high pass filter or low pass filter, just leave it in the middle because you don't want to do your equalization twice. And that's the same thing over here on the other channel. I've just left it as pass through or in the off position. This is how the equalizer looks like internally. We have that inductor over here and these are the brainchild of this equalizer. We have these chips, the F4558 chip and there are seven of them for each of the seven bands. And then we have for the subwoofer and two more for the inputs over here. One functionality flow I found in the Boschmann seven band equalizer is this button over here. Now, you can't hear anything, but if I play some music, it's now connected to this phone. But if I unselect that and then I play with the music, that music will come from the speaker. You can hear it just as a faint. If I place my mic over here, I know you can hear something. So you have to be wary about that kind of distortion when using this Boschmann equalizer. Something very important I almost skipped is the price. So I bought this unit for 3,000 Kenya shillings, but normally the price is between 3,000 to 3,500 Kenya shillings. This is around 20 to 25 US dollars. So now that you know how to use this unit, you know how to connect the inputs and outputs, and you know what every single dial over here does, let's talk about why you don't need to buy this product in 2023 going forward. But first of all, let me take you to the 2000s and I'm talking about the year 2000 to around 2010. Let's talk about two of the biggest flaws that equalizers solved back in the day. And one was the extra input. Back in the day, car radios have very few inputs. It was either FM and a tape or CD player if you are very lucky to have a CD player in your head unit. That's why you required such a device because you could get that extra input over here. And with this extra input, you could connect your MP3 player, your Walkman, your Discman, or your CD changer. And that's right, people had these very big CD changers in their vehicles. They were so big, they could never fit in the dashboard. People had them installed in the boot. So you really did need such a device to connect to your external CD player. The second biggest reason people used this device is the ability to connect to multiple amplifiers. Like we've already seen, you could connect to your front, rear, and subwoofer. But nowadays, this is made redundant by modern digital media receivers. That is because such a modern digital media receiver has many inputs. For example, this one has FM, it has Bluetooth, USB, and an auxiliary input over here. So you really don't need this nowadays. And the second biggest reason you don't need this is that modern digital media receivers have inbuilt equalizers. For example, my head unit over here has an inbuilt 13 band equalizer. This is only a seven band equalizer. You might argue that you have those extra outputs. Well, so does this media receiver because my media receiver over here also has front, rear, and subwoofer outputs. So there is really no need to use this product in 2023. Modern digital media receivers also solve a very important problem that was available in early head units. And for those of you that remember, you could never listen to the radio at full maximum volume, and that was because of distortion. The music was just unbearable. You would never listen to it at maximum volume, but that's not the case on modern digital media receivers. Now in modern head units, you can listen to the volume at maximum. And not only that, you can even connect four speakers. For example, take a look at this video. 
this is the, just this head unit alone. No external amplifier has been connected, just this head unit, and it can drive four speakers of that size. Now, you really don't need an equalizer to connect to external amplifiers, especially in your small private vehicle. You just need your head unit and an active subwoofer in the boot. That's all you need. You really don't need this. Now, the other disadvantage of these equalizers is that they rely on friction through their variable resistors over here. Now, in time, these variable resistors will wear out and they will need replacing. So you need to take this to your local technician so that he can repair them. And as a comparison, modern digital media receivers don't use variable resistors for the equalization. Everything is handled by the microprocessor inside here. And now finally, let's talk about why you need to use this product. And in my mind, I only have two instances. And number one is if you have a very crappy input. Now, for example, if it's your phone or those MP3 players that people use, take a look at this photo. That's the MP3 player I'm talking about. If you are going to use such kind of inputs, then you really need this product because this usually cleans out all the outputs and it provides very clean base, for example, very good product. And the second reason is in Matatus. Like I've already explained in this video, the ease of use of this product is unmatched. And for those of you that don't understand what Matatus are, here is a pictorial representation. These are what we call Matatus in Kenya. This is a typical Matatu. It's usually made up of the driver's cabin and the passenger cabin, as you can see at the back over here. And normally, these two cabs are usually separated by that wall you can see over here. And this is how a modern Matatu looks like inside. It has speakers all over the roof and subwoofers at the back seat. Now, the driver is usually responsible for these vehicles. He's driving, picking and dropping passengers. He's also driving a manual vehicle. And on top of that, he is the DJ. And this is how the Boschman equalizer can make his work easier. Now you guys remember the fader button. Now if the driver wants to hold a conversation with someone in the driver's cabin without reducing the volume for everyone, he just uses this knob over here like that. Now the music in the rear speakers will be unaffected but the one in the front speakers will be reduced. By the way, this button works as a volume button. At the center, the front and rear are balanced but when you bias it towards the rear, the front will become minimized. And again, like I explained, in some music mixes, some songs usually have a very strong bass. And just by turning the sub gain anti-clockwise like that, he can reduce the bass. It's quite very simple and very fast to use as opposed to doing that on the head unit. So you can see how useful this thing is in Matatus. Some drivers also use this gain as the main volume, which is not recommended, but again, it's very easy to control the whole music system of the whole Matatu with just one button. But again, it's recommended to use the main volume on the head unit. Plus, he can also set his music according to his preferences. It's too bad if your driver does not know whatever they are doing, but most do and you get very clean music in some vehicles. So that's it guys. Let me know what you think of my video in the comments below. Right next is the user manual. You can post and read whatever page you want. And thank you for watching. Let's meet in the next video and goodbye.